Hey everyone, welcome back to the VSO Gun Channel. Thanks for joining us here today. And today we're talking about body armor. And I know there's a whole bunch of people out there that don't want you to have this stuff. But if we have a rational historical discussion about this, humans have been making weapons for a very long time. And ever since we created weapons, there has been a movement to try to defeat weapons. And thus armor was born. And it could be argued, depending on the anthropology, at least tens of thousands of years, humans have been making armor to get around weapons. So it is your right to defend yourself, whether that's actively with a weapon of your own or by owning body armor to passively defeat threats. So my soapbox political thing is done. Let's talk about armor because there's a lot of crap out there, guys. I just got to be honest. And that's the only way to put it. If you can buy some really cheap crap out there. Now, the company that I use for standalone armor is Caliber Armor. We've done videos on their steel armor previously. They offer it in a couple different variations, but this particular plate is a multi-curve AR550 plate. And then for comparison purposes, I have what would be considered an ultra-modern plate in a polyethylene. Real quick disclaimer before we go any farther, Caliber Armor is an affiliate to VSO. We have tested this particular plate in full, linked in the description box down below. However, there is a discount code and affiliate link over on the VSO Affiliates page. You will find that over there, so if you want to leverage that. So what goes into the decision between a steel cord piece of armor and something like the polyethylene? And I think I can say this. I'm pretty sure I can say this. This is a collab between Caliber and Hesco. So quality stuff over here. So I think that the most duh parameter is going to be weight, of course. The poly is going to be much lighter than the steel. And to illustrate this difference, what I did is this morning I got up and I strapped on my HRT plate carrier that's got two caliber plates in it, and I just wore it around for an hour and a half. Now, disclaimer, I train. Like, I, I lift five, sometimes six days a week, and because of that... I may not fatigue as fast as somebody else would. However, I wanted to illustrate what kind of happens to your shoulders after carrying around the weight of a fully laden plate carrier with steel armor in it after some time. Came back after a little bit of a rest and did the exact same thing, only I switched the plates out for the poly plates. And you can see that there is some difference here in how the thing sits. The steel armor is going to fatigue your shoulders much quicker than something that is lighter. Duh. So next would be profile. And depending on how you think about this, you could fall on either side of the fence on this. <laughs> the profile is substantially different. So this plate is obviously much thinner than this one over here. And that goes into the methodology in defeating the round. So if you think about a piece of steel, Basically, the way it works is that high-velocity round comes in, hits the steel, the steel does not deform, and it just shatters that bullet. And then the anti-spall layer that you see is fairly appreciable on this particular plate. We have, again, a full video testing. This anti-spall layer does a pretty good job. But the idea is fragment it, catch it in the anti-spall layer without deforming the plate. If you look at this thing, by contrast, the idea is that this plate is going to basically shatter in localized areas. And what that is going to do is that giving is then going to slow the bullet down as it fragments, and then it's going to be caught in this plate. So there's a big difference there in the methodology. And because of that, we have more space, more material, less space, less material. Now what that can do is a couple different things. We'll start with this guy right here. Is this is gonna push you out a little bit farther. So if you go to take your weapon and, and mount your shoulder weld on the thing and you hit this plate, it's gonna be significantly farther out in front of you than this one will. Okay, now when you put it in a plate carrier, you have to choose a plate carrier that is specifically designed or has accommodation for the different types of armor that you're using. Now, my HRT 
over here in the corner has plenty of adjustment range you'll take either of them however personal experience this plate right here because it is thin has a little bit of slop in it inside that carrier even though it has lots of adjustment range so to combat that all i did was put this anti-trauma plate behind the thing and as you can see made it a little bit thicker kept it from slopping around inside the armor pocket and that is kind of one of those things that you have to look at now there are going to be some carriers out there especially the cheap crap that you can find at certain places that will fit this but won't actually take something like this it'll fit this really really well but it won't fit this especially if you purchase something i'm not going to name any names from companies that make armor that is exclusively steel they may not have accommodation to be able to handle this thing or it might hang out the bottom and may not properly secure itself because this is dimensionally larger so that's something that you do have to throw into the mix when you are accounting for getting your own armor set up next up is spalling and actually i gotta be honest I really hate the term spalling because if you look up the definition of spalling, what we use that term for when it relates to armor is not actually what it means. But I digress. We'll keep it and we'll use it for today's video because it's a really easy way to describe what it is. But fragments hitting the armor and then going elsewhere. You know, oh, it can it can bounce and hit you in the chin and, you know, oh, you got a bunch of important. There are lots of junky products out there that you should be watching out for. You should never have an unshielded piece of armor. And Caliber does offer unshielded pieces of armor. I don't agree. That said, you should be cognizant that the cost increase is part of the package. You should be purchasing shielded armor. Now, if it's sprayed in bed liner, that does not an anti-spall layer make. A bed liner sprayed sprayed a piece of armor is not okay. That does not work. Uh, some of the Kevlar weave stuff can do better. However, this is the best stuff that I have seen to date as far as steel-coated anti-spall. We tested this. The biggest problem with anti-spall layers is the internet. You see a whole bunch of tests out there that are completely fictitious. We'll sit there and see how many rounds till the anti-spall layer fails well realistically speaking this is good this is supposed to do like one or two and i think this one did like nine or something like that it was either six or nine i can't remember out of a 556 five, gun the idea is <laughs> if you have been hit more than once or maybe once or twice in rapid succession you have made some other critical error to lead to this point don't do that okay this is not designed to do hundreds of rounds of anti-spall. That's never going to be a thing. By contrast, this plate will get chewed through by the time the anti-spall layer becomes ineffective on a plate like this. Now, I've not actually tested this plate. I'm not sure how many rounds this will take, but I, I almost guarantee that if I put five or six rounds in the same spot on this plate, that it's not going to fare very well. By contrast, the steel cord armor can take multiple impacts in the same general area without a failure, depending on how it's I'm not saying it's rated for that, but depending on how the armor's doing that day, generally speaking, it's going to take a couple different rounds based on the gun, range, etc., the velocity of the cartridge, all that sort of stuff, right? Don't misquote me. But generally speaking, a piece of steel armor is going to be very, very rugged and by the time that anti-spall layer will die far before the core of the armor will not so much this one's really easy back face deformation some zero <laughs> basically because this plate is much more massive and by the method that we discussed that it defeats rounds this is not going to really deform and because it is much more massive it's going to be a different signature as far as if you were to be wearing it and get hit. This is going to feel a lot different than something like this will. Now, this does have some built-in squish padding on the back to kind of help with that. Just throwing that out there. You, I'm not saying that you 
shouldn't wear an anti-trauma plate. It's not going to feel good regardless. However, recovery may be a little bit faster with something like this. Second to last, buoyancy. <laughs> if you throw on a plate carrier that's got two of these guys in it, I don't think it's a really a surprise to anyone, but if you jump in water <laughs> that is over your head, you will sink like a stone or like a human that has two pieces of steel tied to them. It's going to be less than ideal. Something like this is buoyant. This is going to float. I wonder if I can get away with that as a life jacket. No, I don't think that they'll appreciate that if I'm duck hunting with this in it. And be like, yeah, it's a life jacket. What are you talking about? I should look up and see if it's rated for that. See if it actually counts. Anyway, I digress. So if you're somebody who works around water and you choose to use steel body armor, maybe have some quick release buckles on your plate carrier because... Uh, it's, it's not advised, let me say, let me just say that. Maybe, maybe. Lastly, and in my opinion, the reason why most people end up going with a steel offering over something like this is cost. This plate right here is super competitive. I don't actually, I'm shocked. I just checked on their website. I don't know how they make any money on this, especially with the the small coat, the multi-curve plate, the material, I, 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 I don't know. I really don't because I think this thing's going for like a hundred bucks right now or a little bit over a hundred dollars for, for this thing. That's pretty competitive, especially again, everything is packed into it and it's performance. This guy, four times the cost. Okay, so this is over four for a single plate. That's something that a lot of people have a hard time swallowing. And I can justifiably understand why that would be. This is more of like one of those items that you long-term invest in versus, you know, hey, I got like five rigs and I need more, more armor, right? I'm not downplaying this product, but it is a lot easier because this is a rugged product. It's a lot easier to have multiple plate carriers that are set up for armor with something like this than it is this. Spending a thousand dollars every single time you need to put together a rig, that can get a little bit steep for a lot of people. I understand it. So along with that, I would say in closing, both of these things on the back of them say warranty period five years. And I'll have a close-up shot for you guys on both of them. I don't know what that actually means, but I can definitively say that the shelf life of something like this cannot possibly be the shelf life of this. I'm not saying that in 20 years that this is just going to be a pile of mush. I'm not going to say that. Like, that would not be realistic because we know that that's not the truth. I don't know how long this material lasts. I can definitively say, though, that this is going to last a very, very long time. So, I would even postulate that long after the human race, human civilization has ended, that some future FTL alien culture will find this and theorize what it was used for. Because this thing is basically going to last forever. Fragility, maybe don't dive off of tall things with this. Again, I'm not sure if that's a real thing or not, but it could be argued that this is not this. This could be used as an anvil if I had to, or a melee weapon. 